Hi, I'm Hoodie here, and this is a story of my last war with the elves. For now. I'm sure I'll be declaring lots of wars on lots of new elf civilizations once the Steam version comes out, but with my world bound for retirement, I figured this might be my last chance to stick it to the elves that I've been dealing with for the last couple of months. And when I say dealing with, I mostly mean harassing. I was the one who unleashed my squad of were-lizards on an elf caravan after all. But hey, one time they asked me to chop down slightly fewer trees, so they probably had it coming. I embarked in the mountains to the north of the jungles and forests that the elves had made their home. I brought along a couple of swords to start off the military, but kept everything else fairly standard. When we arrived, I found out there was a massive waterfall and lots and lots of trees. We were in elf country, alright. My plan was to rush for adamantine so I could supply my dwarves with as many adamantine short swords as their stout little hearts could desire, and so I got right on that. After a little digging around and one close call where I almost melted a miner, I found a vein. I dug into it on the lowest level I could and went up from there. When it was all said and done, there was enough adamantine to supply a whole army, which was good because that was exactly what I was planning on doing. With the adamantine located, my dwarves went to work extracting the strands, smelting the wafers, and creating swords for the military. I was briefly distracted when a crocodile forgotten beast arrived and used its fire breath to burn down an entire cavern layer. But once I was assured it couldn't find its way in, I skipped through the cavern collapse notifications and got back on track. In our first year, some elf merchants had come to sell their wares at my fortress, but I didn't interact with them. When they returned in our second year, our military was just getting off the ground, and I figured that there was no better training than getting in an actual combat scenario. Of course, elf merchants don't bring guards with them, and are generally even squishier than actual elf combatants, so they didn't put up much of a fight. The nearby elf forced retreat of pristine wheels was not too pleased about that, or that I sent a tantruming axe lord on a one-woman mission to burn down their town. One way or another, we ended up at war. After killing a weird skulking night creature, I began to notice that my dwarves were getting hungry. So hungry that they were doing a little skulking of their own around the corpse stockpile looking for vermin to eat. So when a dwarf caravan arrived, I felt obligated to trade for food. And then when my next migrant wave arrived, I made sure to split the dwarves evenly between farming and joining the military to balance things out a little better. While all of this was going on, I was actively ignoring a dwarf that had been taken by a strange mood, but had run out of gems or something. To me, he seemed like a bit of a slacker shirking his military training, but I regretted ignoring him a little bit when he went berserk and started punching people in the temple. Luckily, nobody was seriously hurt. Other than him, of course. He was killed by his former friends. I guess the silver lining was that seeing a friend die might harden them to the realities of combat. We had to look back to that same silver lining many more times soon after, when we had a brief problem with were-apes that killed multiple dwarves before I was even aware there was a problem. After combing the combat logs and exiling anyone who had been bitten, it was a tense month of waiting for the next full moon to see if I had missed anyone that would kickstart another wave of death and banishments. Fortunately, I had been thorough enough in my first pass, and we had no problems. For a while, things were peaceful, just adding migrants to squads, hammering out some swords, and buying alternative weapons for dwarves that were in more of a hammering mood. On our way to 100 population, which I had decided would be the launch point for our offensive, we were attacked ourselves. First by goblins, who would have been underprepared to fight any fort, let alone one that was owned to the teeth like ours. That went poorly for them. And then secondly by some elves who tried to ambush my fortress, but were instead clobbered so hard their bones went through the ground into my fort, later causing quite the stink. Neither attack had dropped our population or even deterred migrants from coming, because after another migrant wave, we had reached triple digits. Of our 100 dwarves, around 65 of them were permanently focused on their military training, and around 25 of those were elites in their field. We had surpassed all the obstacles that had come to us in our build-up, but with that kind of firepower on our side, it was time to take this war to the elves directly. As we were waving goodbye to the three squads that I sent to raise pristine wheels to the ground, we were once again attacked by goblins. This time they came better prepared with trolls and beak dogs in tow, and I was missing half my squads. Still, they didn't even stand a chance. Soon after the last beak dogs were chased down, I was notified that my squads had returned, and they brought good news with them. Pristine Wheels was destroyed. Not being one to rest on my laurels, I immediately looked to the next closest elf settlement, which was the forest retreat of Coast Friendly. It was a part of a different elf civilization than Pristine Wheels, but my war was against all elves, not just one branch of them. 
I alternated some of the squads to spread out the military experience, and then sent out the mission to destroy Coast Friendly. After a few tense days of idly managing the fortress, my squads came back with a mission report. Another resounding success. We were two for two, and for the third my dwarves would basically just have to retrace their steps, because the forest retreat of Glitter Squashed was right next door to the remains of Coast Friendly. Another mission, another forest retreat destroyed, with the elves within scattered to the wind. With all three attacks, I had initiated war on a different elf civilization, and so I had to keep it up for number four, the forest retreat of Divided Praise. Divided Praise was further from my fortress than any previous target, and much closer to a center of elven power, aka Rushed Fang, the 2000 population forest retreat just a couple minutes walk away. However, any nerves I had for this mission were completely unwarranted, because the squads came home and delivered yet another mission report detailing the destruction of an elven retreat. Our campaign of destruction had only been going on for just over a month at this point, but had destroyed four forest retreats all around 100 population, and had started wars with three additional elf civilizations on top of the one I had already been at war with. At the speed I was going, they hardly had time to respond, and so I decided to press my advantage and head right for the herd of the elves. Rushed Fang. This mission would need more than just 30 dwarves though, and so I sent all but the lowliest recruits to burn Rushed Fang to the ground. As the days passed by at the fortress, I wouldn't have even described myself as nervous. Four straight victories with hardly any losses had inflated my confidence, but it wasn't long before my bubble burst. The first bad sign was that the mission report returned, but not the squads. The second was that the first line of the mission report revealed that a human was leading the defense efforts and that he led other humans as well as elves. Elves are easy, they wear their linen tunics and try to smack you with a piece of wood. Humans are a little more difficult, they have actual armor and weapons to contend with. The mission report seemed to tick on forever, with the news gradually getting worse and worse. At first we held our own, but given enough time and soldiers, my squads didn't stand a chance, especially having to face both humans and elves. And then, my worst nightmare. Imprisonment after imprisonment after imprisonment. I'm sure since it's an elf prison the bars are probably made of wood or something, but still not a great look for my military leadership. I suppose I may have gotten a little cocky after knocking off four straight forest retreats. But with my army utterly dismantled, I'm willing to call all four of my wars against the various elf civilizations a draw and move on if they are. After all, I'm sure elves are too busy climbing trees to even think about getting even. At least that's what I hope. Thanks for watching.